Okay, everybody, let's start, make a start. So, um, question one. First thing I want to do is read all the diagram because I've got these two forces here um, and two forces here acting on the flange. So we'll simplify our diagram like this. Got kind of block in the middle. And two outer tubes like that. And our forces will be 10 going this way. We've got 20 going this way. <clears throat> we've got 30 going this way. And we've got 20 going this way. Now, reading the question, it says, determine the displacement of the end D, so that's here, in respect to A. And if you quickly sum up your numbers here, we've got 10. Take away 20, minus 20, plus, so that's minus 10, uh, plus um, 30, so that's going to be 20, and take away 20, so actually, so everything looks balanced. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 40, 40. Um, so this is in effect we're going to treat this position here as if it's uh, stationary we could in effect create a fictitious reaction force which is going to be zero but uh, so we we'll treat this as to be the the stationary location and we want to see how d moves in relationship to the uh, the a location there The assembly is all made out of the same material, right? So the next thing you want to do is to say how you will then split up the assembly. So I'm going to put a, a cut through the assembly at this location here, and I have uh, some internal forces acting. So F1 going this direction, F1 going that direction, so they balance out. Then I'll make a cut through the assembly here. So I'm going to have F2 going in this direction, and F2 going in this direction. Okay, and then we we'll have a cut here, I'm kind of run out of space in my diagram. So I have an internal force, and I call that F3. And I need to balance them out. So you only really want to do one diagram. You want to be drawing three sets of diagrams here. And so the first thing you want to be doing is um, sort of saying to yourself, well, um, let's imagine that we are just going to do uh, look at this section here, the right of this section here. So we're going to take this cut through here. And that will mean that we can throw away everything on our left. So if I sum up forces and I sum up forces such that they're going to go pointing in the right direction. If I just looked at what was right of this line here, I would see that I'd have a minus F1. And I would have a minus 20 equals zero. So you want to rearrange this and you end up with F1 equals minus 20. Then you want to do the same thing, repeat it to each cut. So we're going to now take this cut here. Now what you can see is if we throw, we're going to ignore everything to the left of us and just look at the stuff to the right. And what happens now is that the F1 and the F1, they both cancel out. They both are, are pointing um, you know, equal and opposite. So it's only the cut that's been exposed is the F2 cut that's been exposed. But then what other forces can we see is we've got a 30 going in this direction, plus 30. Take away 20 equals zero. So I got that to be F2 equals to be 10. So that tells me the internal forces in that section. Now let's do this final thing here. So we're going to take this imaginary cut through here. So we ignore everything on the left of us. 
and just look at things right. Now you can see the F2s cancel out, F1s cancel out, and we'll have an F3 going right to left. <clears throat> so that makes it negative. A minus 20, a plus 30, a minus 20 equals zero. So that then gives me that, that the F3 internal force will be minus 10. So you've worked out uh, your various internal forces in the in the particular sections of the assembly. The next thing is uh, you're going to want to know the areas. So the area for this section here, which we call is the uh, section three, and this section here, section one, they're going to have the same areas. So that will be area one equals area three. And I'll use pi d squared divided by 4. And the um, diameter for that section is 20. You can change your millimeters into meters. Square it. And you get 3.1416 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared and then for the uh, larger tube in the middle sex rod should say um actually no that's a that's an assembly section here so it's a tube so we've got pi four so i'm going to have the outer diameter which is 40 times 10 to the minus three square it Take away the inner diameter squared, so that's 30 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. And I got that to be 5.4978 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. Right, so I've got my areas. I don't have to worry about my Young's modulus. It's the same. And the formula that I'm going to use you'll find on your formula sheet is the displacement change is given as the sum of the internal forces times by the length of each relevant section divided by the Young's modulus for the, that particular section divided by the area for that particular section and that works out to be well the first section will be this one here so we want to be using f1 and that will be minus 20 times 10 to the minus 10 to the power of 3 sorry and it's got a length of 400 millimeters and it has young's modulus of 68 they all have young's modulus 68 gigapascals And the area for, for the first section is 3.1416 times 10 to the minus 4. Right, so now the next section, so we're now looking at F2 section there. That has an internal force. Now you need to make sure that your pluses and minuses are kept um, whatever way you decide to define them, you're going to keep the respective directions. So this, we first had a minus number, so now we've got a positive number. So 10 times 10 to the power of 3. And it has a length of 400 millimeters as well. You could have factored these, I suppose. And it has Young's modulus 68.9 times 10 to the 9. And it has a, a diameter um, area, sorry, sec cross sectional area of 5.978 <coughs> times 10 to the minus 4. And then I want to add on the last section, put it up here. The last section, it has an internal force of minus 10. So minus 10 times 10 to the 3, 400 times 10 to the minus 3, 
68.9 times 10 to the 9. And it has an area of 3.1416 times 10 to the minus 4. So put all that into your calculator, and I got that uh, we have an overall answer of minus 4.4. 4879 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm working in SI units here, so that's going to be meters. So press your eng button on your calculator to make it into 10 to the minus 3. And then that and that will tell me what the answer is in millimeters. So 449 millimeters. And so that agrees with one of the possible answers that are correct. So I'm happy with my solution.